I think this is my new favorite player in the NFL. He's playing in his fourth season in the NFL. He is one of the best young defenders in the entire league. Everybody, please give a warm welcome to Panthers defensive end, Brian Burns, my brother's keeper. Yay! What's up, Burns? What's up, Brian? Hey, Brian. Brian. hey how you doing? <laughs> Um, so excited to talk to you. Always loved you. Always followed your career. And then it just jumped up a notch in terms of our admiration of you last week, Brian. Obviously, you guys beat Tampa. It was incredible. But after that Week 7 performance against Tom Brady and the Bucks, when you told reporters how you were planning on celebrating, we all loved it. Let's take a look back. I don't know. I don't even know what you asked. But now that I got a sack with Tom and we got the dub, I think I'm going to have three glasses of Hennessy tonight and watch two movies. Friday and uh -huh. what else? Okay. Huh? Friday and what else? Rush Hour 2. I just, I, well, I ain't going to watch Friday tonight. I'm going to watch Rush Hour 2. I'm going to watch Bad Boys 2. That's two and New Jack already. City. Oh, oh, you're yeah. throwing it yeah, back. So, so three games. Okay. With the Hennessy? Oh, yeah, I ain't got he nothing He said three. Lose. Three glasses tonight. Three glasses of Hennessy. Nothing to do with straight. Best day. Best down two. You tipsy. Sorry. Brian, it's the best thing ever. We need to know how was <laughs> Nino Brown, how was Bad Boys 2, how was Rush Hour 2, and how was the Hennessy? Was it as good as you could ever imagine? Yeah, it's always great. It's always as great as it could be. Uh, but yeah, I had a great time uh, Sunday night. I watched two movies. I fell asleep um, okay. before I could get New Jack. But uh, Rush Hour 2 and Bad Boys 2 is always going to make me laugh like I ain't never seen them before. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, they're both fantastic, mm -hmm. and we love hearing that. And now we get to week eight, because all, all of a sudden, Panthers are alive, and although everyone in the media might have written them off after trading McCaffrey and Robbie, here you guys are, and here come the Falcons. Big game. How are you feeling, and how do you guys stay on track saying, hey, we know we can still do that this season? Uh, pretty much keeping the main thing the main thing, and, um, you know, as you say, like everything we went through those those past two weeks, it was uh it's kind of hectic. And um I think I, I I tip my hats off to the leaders. They kept the team together, they kept the main thing, the main thing, and that was really competing at a high level and uh going to get in the winner. Brian, I know um Kyle just said how much he's followed your career and how he's a fan of you, but like I just want you to have like a good understanding. Like Kyle is like m movie yeah. music like and mm -hmm. have like a cocktail that you love guy. Mm -hmm. And so when you said that and he was so happy to bring that into the show on Monday, like I just that was like a 10 for Kyle. So like officially <laughs> you just launched yourself into like Kyle Brandt adoration. So just true, I wanted to set the table for that, just so you know. Moving forward. He's not a stalker, he just loves that stuff. Um, <laughs> and he can never make it to the Third Hennessy either. No, no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no. Um, but uh, we'll talk about your interim head coach, Steve Wilkes. The scene in the locker room after the game was so beautiful. It was so poignant. Let's let's take a look back. Yeah, this is for you, brother. Brian, you just mentioned that the leadership in the locker room kept this team together when the going got tough, but Steve Wilkes must have had a part in that. What was it like to be in that room after the game? Uh, it was electric. Uh, like I said, looking at that clip, you thought we won the Super Bowl. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, basically, he, he played a big part in keeping us together as far as letting us know that this, we're not tanking, like this is, not, this is nothing. Um, that, everything that we're going through is just a part of the, a part of the season. So he, kept, he made it a big part, keeping the main thing the main thing as far as winning and that we're not giving up. And um, like I said, it's an unspoken, you know, it's an unspoken understanding and, and respect for Steve Wilkes in the building. And uh, everybody want to play for him and we want to see him win. And that was his first win as a head coach and, and everyone was excited for him and for his team. All right, well, just like uh, three rounds of Hennessy, you're on your third round of keeping the main thing the main thing. And Steve okay. Wilkes, I know, deserves a lot of credit. Al Holcomb, uh, I, I think uh, you guys were, were ecstatic to have him kind of get elevated, so props to him. But we got to stop the celebrating right now, all right? You celebrated, you got to sack Tom Brady, but you got a big one ahead of you with the Atlanta Falcons. 
Tom Brady is a pocket quarterback, right? You know where he's going to be, so you can get after him a little bit. Marcus Mariota, a little bit of a different animal. So what's Al Holcomb and Steve Wilkes cooking up for you guys this week against Marcus Mariota? Uh, pretty much, yeah, we know he's dynamic. And with this offense, they have a lot of moving pieces, um, especially with this read option they got going on. It's a lot of a lot of moving parts to try to get your eyes going different ways. And, and uh, he's a fast guy. And he, uh, he attacks the edge pretty well. So we have to really pretty much keep our eyes on him and contain him. Um, and they're run first right, predominantly, so they're going to try to come out here and run the ball. We just have to, you know what I'm saying, shut that down, shut what they do well down, and um, make them throw it in the air. Brian, let's talk about the movies you're going to watch this weekend. Uh, you go to Atlanta, let's say you do take care of business and you win. Mm -hmm. Get back home. Do you have a plan? Like, when do you set up what the films are going to be? Do you have anything set up for this week? And do you need any recommendations, or are you cool? I can use the recommendations, maybe something a little new. Uh, you know, I, I go through my my, uh, my over labels, so uh, I stick to, you know what I'm saying? So I, I can go way back and go to Money Talks. I can go all about the Benjamins. Mm -hmm. mm, uh, I love Money Talks. Money Talks is a good movie, for sure. Uh, great. I like Life uh, with Martin Lawrence and uh, Eddie Murphy. Yep. Yep. That's another great movie that I always watch. Um, American Gangster. It's, it's a couple movies I can keep going, but um, they Lucas, pretty much just come to That's alpaca. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. If you're talking young Martin Lawrence and young Eddie, what say you guys beat the Falcons and, and maybe you watch a little boomerang with some Hennessy Ooh. this weekend? Ooh. A little boomerang? I can do that. Oh, yeah. Bo have you seen boomerang? Sure. Boomerang's you know excellent. Boomerang? I might. Young Halle Berry, young Rob McGivens. Ooh. <laughs> I might change it up a little bit. I might change it up. I might, I might take you on your offer. And I might switch it up with a little deuce this time. <laughs> nice. I don't know what that means, yeah. but it sounds okay. cool. If, if McCordy was here, he'd be able to tell us what that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see the four of us at the table, yeah. we're all nodding our heads. Yeah, yeah sure, that sounds great. Um, hey, make sure you bring out the mushroom belt. Uh, earlier this week, we had uh, the legendary Kenneth Babyface Edmonds on our show. Yeah. Looks like you are a huge fan <laughs> of classic R&B, and you're a great personality. Brian, I gotta be honest, we've loved you since your draft process yep. when we got to know your story, and you were so amazing Thanks. on that red carpet that week. And just, we're happy for you and the success you're having as a pro. So let's go back to your childhood and move it to now. Your top three classic R&B artists. If you're making a, mm -hmm. a Hall of Fame, three of them, R&B, we had Babyface on, who do you got? Ooh, that's tough. Uh, how far can I go back? As, as far as, as you as want. As we can go want. back to Barry Gordy. As long as you want to go back, we can go. Who's Barry Gordy? <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to go. I've always been a big Luther fan. Uh, I'm going to go yep. Luther. I'm going to go Freddie Jackson. Freddie Jackson. And I'm going to take you back to a little group. I'm going to go to Whispers. The Whispers. What's that? Tell us about that. Give us the Whispers. I don't what know the got? Whispers. Give us the Whispers. You know, that's like in 19, maybe 1980, I think. That's the, I think I it's in the 80s. This. They're, uh, they're actually, uh -huh, it was uh -huh. the two lead singers, the twins. <laughs> you can check out some of these. They got All right. Yeah. See, this Listen. is it. This is, could have very, very easily said, give me Usher, give me Whitney, give me Luther. You uh, gave us the Whispers, which we're going to play in our commercial that's break for man. everyone here. Brian, you are you are the real deal, man. You've got the catalog down. I like this. For sure, for sure. I keep I keep it like that, man. Listen, <laughs> that's right. There's whispers right now that say that the Panthers could win the NFC South. It's One. wide open, know. baby. It's huh? wide open. Brian, you're the best. <laughs> Enjoy the weekend. Good luck against the Falcons. Enjoy Boomerang and the Whispers. We love you, man. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate you. Thank you. Take care, Brian. Two Brian Burns. Uh, number one singles by the Whispers. And